Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to start our afternoon session, and the first witness is Professor John Quigley. Uh, Professor Quigley, would you come to the podium, please? Professor Quigley. Yes, I want to take up some themes that, that were uh, initiated this morning, in particular uh, in, in Peter Hansen's uh, discussion about the United Nations uh, and what might be done there. Uh, the, 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 and I also want to touch on the, the policy of of the United States uh, with respect to those matters, and in particular that of, of Palestine statehood, um, which I think is, is, a, is a key issue, and of course is, is being taken to the UN uh, by the, the, uh, the, the government of, of Palestine. Um, uh, and uh, there are several <laughs> key aspects of it. I mean, one is the question of whether Palestine really is a state. Um, and it's my view that, that it is a state, uh, that it has been a state uh, at least since 1924. Um, uh, but that's something where I find there's a great deal of disagreement uh, uh, among uh, scholars, um, uh, even scholars who generally are, are, are taking positions uh, uh, supportive of, of uh, the Palestinian cause. Um, but, uh, but I think it's, it's quite clear that, that it is a state. If you look at the Treaty of Lausanne of 1923, 1924, the treaty that ended the First World War, uh, you find the major powers are referring to Iraq, to Syria, to Palestine uh, as being states. Um, and the Permanent Court of International Justice, the court that preceded the, the current uh, Internet court of Interna uh, International Court of Justice, uh, in a decision uh, during the 1920s also very clearly said that Palestine was a state as a successor to the uh, Ottoman Empire in the, in the territory uh, of, of Palestine. Um, so so that, that's one very important point, uh, which perhaps we can go into because it, it, it's, uh, uh, it's a point w w with some uh, uh, complications, and in particular what happens to the Palestine state after 1948, and it seems to me that, that Palestine uh, did continue as a state after 1948, uh, even though most of its territory w was taken over. That is, and no, uh, you did not find either Jordan or Egypt uh, claiming sovereignty in, in the territory uh, of Palestine. Uh, and then you get the Declaration of 1988, and then you get the uh, 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 observer state status of Palestine. Uh, and even though now Palestine is asking for a non-member state status for its observer mission, if you look at the way the UN has dealt with the observer mission that has been there now for, for several decades, they've really dealt with it as the observer mission of a state. That is, that they give Palestine the privileges that are given only to a state. For example, the right of reply in the General Assembly. Uh, so my view is, is that the, the UN effectively uh, has considered Palestine to be a state for, uh, for some time. Um, but uh, I think it is an important issue. I think that, that to the extent that Palestine gains, let's say, greater acceptance as a state, I think it will enhance its, uh, its ability to function uh, in the international community, its ability to, uh, to gain some kind of acceptable status for Palestine, whether it's a two-state solution or, or a one-state uh, uh, approach. Um, uh, and as well, 
um, uh, in, in terms of the negotiations with Israel, of course, Israel says, well, uh, the, the business of, of whether Palestine is a state is something we'll negotiate. Uh, and it clearly takes that off the table if, if Palestine uh, is, is a state. I, I've always found it strange that the government of Israel can take that position, because if you look at the Declaration of Principles of 1993, it specifies the issues on which there is to be negotiation. <laughs> Uh, uh, and one of them is borders. Uh, there's nothing in the Declaration of Principles about Palestine statehood. Uh, that's not something that is on the table uh, according to the Declaration of Principles. Uh, and borders, uh, with whom do you negotiate borders? You don't negotiate borders with an NGO. Uh, you negotiate borders with a state. So there's an implication there uh, of, uh, of statehood. There's also, of course, the question of, of uh, the uh, capacity of the International Criminal Court to deal with, with uh, uh, various issues relating to Palestine, prominently the, uh, uh, the Gaza War, uh, and the settlements. Um, and to the extent that Palestine is accepted as a state, the, the declaration that it filed in January of 2099 you know, may, may be accepted by the uh, Office of the Prosecutor uh, as a basis for uh, uh, in initiating investigations uh, into the atrocities of, of, the, uh, uh, of the Gaza War. Um, uh, and in particular into the settlements because the statute of the International Criminal Court says quite clearly in the definition of, of war crimes that one form of, of war crime or one, one manifestation of war crime is facilitating settlements in occupied territory. Uh, so that's a very practical uh, 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 issue. Uh, the, um, the, the move that's being made now, of course, is to ask for non-member uh, uh, state status, wh which I think would be uh, a, a significant advancement. Um, uh, it, it's a bit strange in that UNESCO has already done that, and UNESCO involves the same states that are in the General Assembly. So in a way, it seems a bit superfluous. Uh, uh, and in a way, it seems odd that the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court didn't consider that a sufficiently uh, a firm statement of the international position about, uh, about uh, Palestine statehood, because in order to become a member of UNESCO, you, you have to be a, a state. That's one of the requirements of, of admission, and Palestine was admitted by, uh, by a comfortable margin in, in, uh, in UNESCO. Um, so um, the, the other issue about how to proceed at the, at the United Nations um, uh, relates to membership. Of course, that's what Mr. Abbas asked for a year ago. Uh, the matter went to the Security Council. The United States put incredible pressure on, on a number of states that were, at the time, members of the Security Council uh, to uh, uh, prevent there being a, a nine-member majority uh, for that uh, to go forward because the United States was obviously prepared to veto but didn't want to have to veto. Uh, so it put great pressure on other states to uh, uh, avoid uh, uh, the, the possibility that it would, would uh, be in a position of exercising uh, the veto. One thing that I think is, is possible um, uh, is that the General Assembly could deal with the membership issue on its own. That is, forget the Security Council and admit Palestine to membership. Um, and it is generally assumed that the General Assembly does not have such a power. Um, but in fact, I think it does. Uh, this comes under Article 4 of the Charter of the United Nations, which says that the General Assembly admits new members upon recommendation of the Security Council. So the question is, what does upon recommendation of the Security Council mean? Does it have to be a favorable recommendation, uh, or does the General Assembly simply have to uh, uh, get some kind of, of uh, uh, advice, as it were, on the matter from the Security Council? Um, uh, and it has been widely assumed that, that uh, the Security Council uh, 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 does have the role of, of, of being able to stop it. That is, that the General Assembly cannot uh, do this on its own. Uh, if you go back to the drafting history of Article 4, however, it is uh, quite clear uh, 
that the opposite is what was intended in Article 4. That is, that, that the intent behind the language upon recommendation of the Security Council was that that would be advisory uh, only. Uh, and this comes out quite clearly in the, in the proceedings of the UN uh, Conference on International Organization that led to the drafting of the, of the Charter uh, in 19... 45. I won't go into the details. There will be an article in the George Washington International Law Review in about a month where I, I set all of this out um, uh, and set out as well the history of the veto. Uh, and if you look at the drafting history of the charter, the veto was, a, was to apply to war and peace matters so that a, a state that was a permanent member uh, uh, wouldn't be in the position of opposing the, the uh, UN if it called for military action. Uh, but beyond war and peace, the veto was not to apply. It's, it's rather clear from the drafting history and the, uh, the, uh, the major powers, including the United States, said that on the record at the drafting history of the, uh, of the conference. So um, uh, e even if one were to consider that the Security Council uh, has to give a positive recommendation, uh, uh, it, it seems to me that uh, the veto does not apply when the Security Council votes on that uh, 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 issue. Um, the other, other issue that uh, I'll just mentioned briefly where I, th I think the United States ha has played a particularly uh, a negative role um, uh, is on the question of, of how one assesses the uh, initiation of the occupation of, of uh, the West Bank and Gaza in 1967. Uh, on a variety of issues, you find the, the government of Israel uh, justifying its position, justifying its, its uh, continued retention of, of, uh, of control, for example, uh, by saying that it acted defensively in, in 1967, that Egypt was about to attack it, um, uh, and that uh, uh, Israel needed to use military force against Egypt uh, uh, preemptively. Um, if you look at what the uh, uh, foreign minister of uh, Israel, Abba Iben, told the Security Council and the General Assembly in 1967, um, that's not what he was telling them. Uh, he was telling them that Egypt had in fact attacked. Uh, uh, it was a, a concocted story, but that was the, the uh, uh, justification that the uh, uh, government of Israel gave at the time. Uh, and the United States was quite aware that this was, was not true. The United States uh, had been very active uh, in trying to discourage Israel from attacking Egypt all through the, the spring of, of 1967. The United States kept telling uh, Israel, no, Egypt is really not going to attack. You, you, you don't need to attack uh, uh, Egypt. Um, uh, and the uh, uh, Israeli government in particular, Abi Iben, kept coming back and saying, oh, yes, we, we have information that Egypt is about uh, to attack. Um, uh, and finally, actually, the head of the Mossad came to Washington and, and, and admitted to Robert McNamara that, that uh, Egypt was not about to attack, even in the estimation of Israeli intelligence. Um, but after the, um, uh, the war went as it did with a very quick uh, victory for Israel, uh, the United States uh, covered up what it knew about the, the, the run-up to the war. Uh, and continues to do so to the present time. I mean, I think it's the current view of the U.S. government that Israel acted defensively in, uh, in 1967. Um, uh, and I think that, that is something that does need to be challenged uh, um, uh, you know, in various ways at the UN and in the, in the public uh, discussion about, uh, about a, a wide range of issues, including in, in particular the settlements uh, in, in the West Bank. Thank you very much, John. Uh, perhaps I could start with the, the first question. Uh, you have um, mentioned the possibility that Palestine might approach the General Assembly of the United Nations for uh, non-member status uh, later this uh, year. Uh, you haven't said anything about the possibility that the International Criminal Court might consider this matter in November, because as you know, a move has been made to the uh, Bureau of the Assembly of State Parties to request it to uh, place this matter on the agenda. And so it is possible that the 
Assembly of State Parties of the International Criminal Court may decide to admit the Palestinian declaration uh, accepting the jurisdiction of the court, which would have the effect of uh, acknowledging the statehood of Palestine, at least for the purposes of the International Criminal Court. Could you comment a bit on that? Yes, I, th I think that would be the, the effect. Uh, the, the Assembly of States Parties has a, uh, as a, uh, a role, I, I, I don't need to say this, for, for Professor Dugard's benefit, because uh, he knows all this much better than I do. But uh, uh, the Assembly of States Parties uh, has a kind of oversight role under the statute of the International Criminal Court. And it has been approached by a number of scholars, actually led by Professor Dugard, to, uh, uh, to take a position on this issue. Uh, given the fact that the Office of the Prosecutor has, has, has kind of put it off. Um, uh, and that, that, uh, that would be another significant step, certainly, in the international acceptance of, of Palestine as a, as a state more broadly, even you know, for matters beyond the International Criminal Court. Thank you. Uh, Michael? Yes, yes, it's a follow-up to that question. That if, in fact, they do accept uh, Palestine as a state, state, that's a recognition point. But there's a further point, is there not, in relation to the empowerment of Palestine in relation to the criminal court itself. In other words, the initiation of investigations and also requests for cases to be brought before it, some of which, of course, relate to Palestine. Would that not be a re repercussion if it's successful? Yes, that the, it would, uh, uh, would then... Uh, uh, put Palestine in the position of being able to initiate uh, the, these cases. I think that's right. Uh, uh, that, um, uh, I mean, what, what Palestine did in 2009 was to uh, file a, a declaration uh, giving the court jurisdiction over any war crimes that had been committed in Palestine since the time of the court's uh, of entry into existence uh, with jurisdiction, which is the, da the date being July 1 of 2002. Um, uh, and and that's, that's quite broad. It, it gives the court jurisdiction to do uh, investigations of quite, quite a lot uh, 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 relating not only to the Gaza war, but, but to other matters. But, sorry, this yes, is supplementary. Please. I mean, the, the point is the court hasn't done anything of its own initiative. In other words, it's the same question that I raised this morning. They do nothing unless they're prompted. And giving them jurisdiction has not meant that they've steamed in to use it at all. Mm -hmm. No doubt they're afraid of various repercussions. But once Palestine becomes a recognized state in relation to the assembly, it seems to me Palestine should then take a very active role in ensuring that cases are brought war crimes, settlements, whatever you choose. Yes, uh, yes, uh, definitely. It, 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 it's not only, as you say, a question of jurisdiction, but a question of bringing issues before the, uh, the uh, court uh, by presenting information. That's how the court uh, operates, is on the basis of information presented by states or, or by, by anyone else. Uh, uh, and that clearly uh, uh, needs to follow and would be an additional uh, uh, issue. The fact that the court has jurisdiction doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to act or even that anybody will, will bring uh, 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 evidence before it. Uh, for, for an example, uh, the Gaza Flotilla, um, 2010, the Mavi Marmara, the, the acts that uh, took place on board that ship resulting in, in, in deaths, uh, possibly involving war crimes. Um, that, in principle, is under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court because the Mavi Marmara, about a month before it sailed to Gaza, was re-registered from Turkey into uh, the registry of the Comoros Islands. Um, and the Comoros Islands is a state that is a party to the statute of the International Criminal Court. And according to the statute of the court, if an act occurs on board a vessel registered to a state party, that act comes within the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. Uh, but so far, that hasn't been pursued. But, but, uh, but to make to the, the point here uh, the, that uh, there can be jurisdiction, but until someone acts upon it, the, uh, the, the court is, is not going to do anything. 
Well, if not, I, th I think we must bring this session to an end. I, I simply wish to uh, thank you very much, Professor Quigley. I think you've pointed out very clearly that uh, the whole question of Palestinian statehood is on the agenda of the United Nations and the International Criminal Court, and that this has very serious implications uh, for the future. I realize that the United States will do its best to block these measures, but uh, I think these are important issues. Thank you.